Hello guys, this is Ghazi Rahman and today we will be talking about the new Aorus B660 Pro Series motherboard. We have two motherboards here. So on the first hand we have the B660M Aorus Pro AX DDR4 motherboard. And here we have got the B660M Aorus Pro DDR4. So basically this one is an AX and this one is just Aorus Pro. So we are going to look at the features of both this motherboard and decide why we should go for the AX or why we should go for the Aorus Pro. So let's roll the intro. So guys, before jumping on into the features, let's have a look at the motherboard itself, right? So first of all, we have the Aorus Pro AX model. Uh, this one here, it's got, a, it's got a nice silver finish to it which we'll be talking about more as we talk about the features and second of all we have the B660M Aorus Pro DDR4 version and this one is well it's got a matte black finish look at this so yeah here we go both the motherboards are just in front and we will not go into the details of all of the contents in the box I think you already seen unboxing videos of this motherboard for a lot. Yeah. So these are the two models, Aorus Pro AX and Aorus Pro, and we will be talking about the features of both these motherboards. So guys, first of all, we'll be talking about the general uh, features of both these motherboards, the features that are available in all, at least almost all gigabyte motherboards, right? So, uh, first of all, we'll be talking about uh, metal shielded PCI, dual BIOS, then you have got uh, Japanese solid state capacitors, Michigan high end audio capacitors. These are some of the features that are uh, present in almost all Gigabyte motherboards. Then you have the solid pins for the 24 pin connector, and you have got the pins for the 8 pin and the 4 pin here. If you look at both of these motherboards, you have the 8 pin and the 4 pin connectors on top. For power delivery to the new processor so second up we have the new socket that's a NGA 7, uh, 1700 socket for the new uh, Intel 12 chain motherboard so yeah next up we'll be talking about the thermal design so most of the gigabytes latest is the motherboard has the thermal card design here you can see the heatsink on both the uh, power phase here here and here are very deep here so we can absorb more heat and dissipate this heat in within your system which can be then picked up by the cooling system or the airflow within your casing and exhaust it out to the back of the casing. So this is the overall uh, features for this motherboard. Now let's talk about some of the new features that has been added to the B660 chipset. So guys, uh, to ensure high end performance and high turbo boost frequencies, Gigabyte will be the 12 phase power design for Aorus Pro models, right? So basically what happens is we have a 6x6 parallel power phases to deliver stable 60 amp power to the processor housed in the LGA 1700 socket and along with that they went with a VCC GT core. So basically that phase, uh, the main goal for that phase is to deliver uh, 50 amp of power to the integrated graphics within the processor itself so that it can boost as well so you can get better integrated graphics performance and finally i've got the uh, vcc aux phase uh, so basically the purpose of that phase is to deliver stable power to the cpu integrated uh, pci express and the memory controller so basically this is the new feature that has been added to this uh, in regard to the power delivery system for this motherboard so next up we'll be talking about the PCI Gen 5 slot. So basically this is the PCI Gen 5 slot, the 16X slot. Uh, this is available in both the motherboards. Like, uh, this is new for both Z, uh, Z690 and the B660 motherboard designs. So what's new about this uh, PCI Gen 5 slot is that it has got double the bandwidth for the previous generation. So that's a huge boost. So guys, let's talk about the thermal design for this motherboard. If you look at the motherboard itself, both the motherboards here, uh, we have got a bigger heatsink here and a heatsink here as well and the M.2 slot, the Gen 4 M.2 slot is also metal shielded, right? So this is uh, done so that it can absorb more heat plus we have got the new heatsink design that uh, we are calling uh, direct touch design. So basically the 
heat sink absorbs a lot of heat. So along with it, we have 2x copper within the PCB itself. So the PCB itself acts as a uh, heat conductor and you know spreads the heat out over a large surface so that it can easily picked up by the uh, airflow system within your casing. So guys, apart from this, some of the other features that are prevalent in this motherboard are RGB fusion. So basically, you have got RGB headers here and here. So basically on the bottom and on the top, so basically you can connect your RGB fans and your RGB LED strips with this motherboard and you can set up the whole RGB ecosystem within your PC with the help of the RGB Fusion software. Plus for the thermals, you have got smart fan pipes. So basically we have built-in sensors within this motherboard itself. So basically with smart fan pipe, what you can do is if you connect your fans with these hybrid headers here, the four pin uh, fan headers, we have hybrid fans, so basically what will happen is the system, the computer system within itself uh, will detect when the temperature is high and when the temperature is low and it will ramp up your fan's RPM accordingly so that your fan powers up when your system is heating and it goes down to an economy mode so that you do not waste energy. So this is uh, here, so this is the system, you can use it. You've got the Easy Tune software as well. So basically, Easy Tune is kind of like a BIOS tuning software. So instead of going back in the BIOS, you can have Easy Tune on your desktop and you can double click from here and you can tweak your BIOS settings like uh, you know memory bus speed and uh, other smart fan file. These kind of uh, settings you can directly do it from your desktop with the help of the Easy Tune software. So these are some of the features uh, that are here with this, this motherboard. So till now. What we find out is both of this motherboard is identical. It, apart from the look, like this is silver and this is kind of like metallic black and with a metallic finish. Apart from that, both of this motherboard are the same. It's identical. There is nothing different within this motherboard. So what makes this Oros Pro AX and what makes this Oros Pro? So next up, we'll be talking about the connectivity options for this motherboard. So guys, this is where the difference between both this motherboard is highlighted, right? So first of all, we have got four USB 2.0 slots. We've got the same one here as well on this Oros Pro model. Next up, we've got the two Wi-Fi antennas here. If you look at it, the golden color uh, knobs. So this is uh, 11AX Wi-Fi antenna. So basically, this connects to the Wi-Fi 6 module built in within the motherboard. So basically, this motherboard supports Wi-Fi, which is not present within this motherboard here. So just below that, we have got a DP port and an HDMI port, right? Same goes here as well. We have a DP port, we have a DP and an HDMI port here as well. Next up, we have a USB 3.2 Type A port and a USB 3.2 Type C port. So basically, the Type A port acts as a Q flash uh, USB hub. So basically, we're gonna update your bias by this uh, slot. And next up, we have four USB 2.0, an uh, Intel 2.5G, that's like uh, 2.5 times the bandwidth from the previous generation. And after that, we have a microphone in and a line uh, out, and a uh, SPDI out for audio connectivity. Same goes for this motherboard as well. So this is the connectivity option that you're gonna find within this motherboard. So the final question arises is why two models, right? This is Oros Pro and this is Oros Pro AX. Only difference being Oros Pro AX has built-in Wi-Fi. Now most of us PC users, we well we don't tend to use Wi-Fi on our PC. We try to uh, we tend to use direct Ethernet connection. Like if you're gaming, like this is a gaming theme motherboard. So Oros series is always focused towards gamers. We do prefer playing directly with the Ethernet cable. Right? for low latency so that we can uh, perform better when playing one their game but that does not mean we do not have any demand for you know motherboards that have built-in Wi-Fi as well so where this board shines is when you have a built-in Wi-Fi as well so you have software so where you can prioritize basically if you have game so you let's say you have a direct line internet line and you have a Wi-Fi line as well so basically what you can do is you can prioritize the internet connection is kind of focused directly on your gaming and other applications like Facebook browsing or listening to YouTube, you can put those load onto the Wi-Fi uh, connected internet as well. You can balance it out so you do not take this up. Whereas in motherboards like this, everything, all the data that you are consuming 
for your, let's say your internet browsing, your gaming, so if you're listening to music while you're playing games, everything is consumed via the Ethernet 2.5G Ethernet port. So if I have to suggest a motherboard for uh, buying, uh, like if you want to buy a motherboard, if you're planning on buying an Oros Pro motherboard, so the confusion might be which one do I buy? Do I go for Oros Pro or do I go for an Oros Pro AX? So if you have the budget, uh, if you have the budget uh, to spend like uh, this, I think the price difference between both this variation is around 3000 BDD. So if you have the budget for it, always go for the Oros Pro AX because having that extra uh, Wi-Fi connectivity option does help. But if you don't have the budget, if you're looking for a let's say P660 high-end board but you do not have enough uh, resource to go for this, Go for this this is uh, around 3000 BDD cheaper so uh, this will give you that performance uh, minus that single wi-fi feature and if you really need wi-fi you can always buy a usb wi-fi download so that's definitely cheaper so guys there you go uh well the features for both oros pro and oros pro x and what's the difference basic difference between both this model board. and if you like this video then please leave a like and do comment on the video as well if you like the video or not. Please mention in the comment if you comment, we learn from it, we try to upgrade. And finally, uh, do give a subscribe to the channel if you like the video so that you can stay updated on the new content that are coming out. We'll be doing a 12th gen build pretty soon, so that will be up on the channel as well. If you want to stay updated about that, do give a subscribe if you are watching it on Facebook page, leave a like there as well. This is Gabriel Oman signing off. We'll see you on the next video.